I am here at the University of Hartford with my friend, Professor Gabe Herman from the Hart School. And he introduced me to my new friend, Dr. Jasinski, at the College of Engineering, Technology, and Architecture. As you can see, they've got some really, really cool facilities here, reverb chamber, an anechoic chamber, some other things, and you'll get to hear that in just a moment. But first off, can you help us understand what you and students here are up to? Yeah, so uh, acoustics is the study of sound and vibration. And we offer two degree tracks here at the University of Hartford. One is a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering with acoustics concentration. So uh, coursework that relates to um, the sound and vibration of machines and buildings and structures. Uh, the other degree program is Acoustical Engineering and Music, which takes those same cor core courses and adds 40 credits of uh, courses at the Hart School of Music. Uh, that's private lessons, uh, ensembles, ear training, music theory, and music history. Um, the idea being that our graduates are going to have uh, you know, full mastery of what they're hearing. So uh, the sound study over at the music school trains your ears. Uh, the, the study here at the engineering school is going to be telling you how to interpret that, how to explain it to somebody who's building or designing a building or an aircraft or an automobile, helping them with you know, understanding all the issues that are related to the sound and vibration of it. So we'll, we'll take a look inside the anechoic chamber. Um, it, it's odd when you go in and just an echoic. It's, it's not echoic. There are no echoes, meaning you pretty much only hear direct sound, right? Exactly. And we will take a closer look, but the way that you achieve that is you're kind of standing on a net and beneath you and on every side of you and above you, you've got acoustic treatment, but not only just any acoustic treatment, it's very, very uh, deep acoustic treatment, right? Can you help us understand why that's the case? Yeah, so in a, a typical room, a uh, recording studio or you know maybe even a, a home office or a classroom, you might see one or two inch thick uh, acoustic panels. Um, it can take all sorts of different forms of you know, colors and textures, but one to two inches about, is about as thick as you'll get. In a space like this, in order to actually reduce as much of the sound at the lowest frequencies you can, we actually have two feet of material. So all the wedges that you'll see, floor, ceiling, uh, and walls, as you mentioned, two foot fiberglass wedges uh, that are wrapped in a silk fabric and covered with a small uh, metal grate so that they keep their shape. Because the material, very important, uh, that spindly material inside is porous, and that's going to absorb all of the sound or as much of the sound as possible. Uh, it's actually converting it to a very small amount of heat, not enough that you could feel it um, on the material, but that's what our sound absorption is. Uh, but the shape is important too. The wedges really make it so that if you think of sound as radiating in all directions as rays, one ray is going to hit part of that wedge, and it's going to bounce into another wedge. So say you absorb 95% of all of that sound on the first hit, the first interaction with that material. Next one, that's going to be 95% of that. Now you're already talking about a very, very low amount of energy. And there's going to be quite a few of those reflections before sound comes back out. So you effectively reduce more than 99% of the total energy that goes in to any one of those wedges. We're going to get back to the video in just a moment, but first I want to mention the Mixing Essentials course by Audio University, developed to help you harness four essential tools, EQ, compression, delay, and reverb. This course includes over 60 lessons, and it's not just theory. You'll see practical demonstrations for how to utilize these essential tools in your mixes. And if you should have any questions along the way, as a member, you'll have access to myself and the course instructor, Professor Gabe Herman, who's been mixing professionally and teaching students for over 20 years. To get instant access to the course, become an Audio University member by using the link below this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. All right, now back to the video. Contrast that then to this other door, door number two, which is the reverb, uh, the reverb room, right? That's all flat reflective surfaces, right? That are not angled. They're just, um, you said that you could achieve how long of a reverb? So if the room is unoccupied, a reverberation time, which is about the time it takes from the onset of a sound until you can't hear it anymore, could be about four, four and a half seconds. So a pretty long time for that to last and persist within a space. And so you'll hear, if you try to talk in that room, it's a little hard to understand what's going on. But yeah, you achieve that not just by increasing the size of the room, because the size does matter for um, you know, what a room is going to sound like. You're in a big cathedral. 
that volume is part of what makes it so that the sound persists for a long time. But the materials are likely the more important component. These two labs are very similar in size. This one's a little bit larger, but it's really that the materials are about 95% reflective. So of all the sound energy that comes into any one point of that material, 95% of it or more is gonna continue bouncing around, find another material, keep bouncing around. So it's really the opposite effect of what happens in that room. And that's what makes it persist for so long. Can we say a little bit more about how the rooms are constructed? So they're not just rooms like uh, connected to the floor. Uh, mm. they're, they're actually suspended from outside influence altogether. Yeah, so I mentioned acoustics is both sound and vibration. And in those facilities, you don't want to just be acoustically isolated. And these are you know, uh, isolated by those interior materials as well as a double wall configuration with an air gap. But they're also vibration isolated. So actually in the back there, you might be able to see one of these coiled springs. Um, uh, yeah, actually maybe you want to grab, sure. Yeah, so this is an example of the type of mechanical spring that we actually have um, underneath both of these rooms. Um, it's not so much that you'd necessarily feel the trampoline kind of effect, but uh, during uh, our renovations of this space, we actually were able to um, uh, calculate the static deflection that we'd get from loading all of our equipment into that space. We had to put basically everything in our lab into that room while they were doing renovations, and it sunk enough to the point that this door was almost unopenable uh, because of the uh, deflection that you have uh, from the loading of these springs. But this makes it so that your vibration isolated from the room, uh, the rest of the building rather. And part of the importance of that is that right through those walls over there is a loading dock. And we're gonna have big trucks coming in. Uh, that's gonna cause a lot of low frequency vibration. So whether you're doing a sensitive test or not, you really don't wanna be feeling those vibrations. So yeah, sound and vibration isolated from the rest of the building.